I'm Brooke. I'm a student here at UT. Um, I saw online that you had surgery for severe scoliosis yeah. when you were 11. I had the same surgery, oh. and it was a really formative experience for me. And so I just wanted to ask, like, how that influenced yeah. you and your life. So, I, yes, I was operated on 13 vertebrae when I was 13 years old. And then when I became 60, they operated on all of 17 vertebrae. Wow, so I have wow. a very, very bad back. But see, my life, uh, I had a career, I was considered a beauty, but when I go to the hospital, they go into a department called deformities. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, Everybody I, gets I brought a, down a peg, right? I, I'm deformed, uh, you know, I'm the cover of Vogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, I think people always say that I'm joyful, and I think it all, a lot came from having seen from very up close a sickness. And it really gives you, you know, I know that if I get up in the morning and I walk and I breathe and I'm healthy, I should be happy. You seem to be getting <laughs> Do you see the same yeah. for you? Yes, yeah, yes. The same. And do you have pain or you can manage it? Uh, a little pain, but it's Yeah, it's me fine. too. I, we have to we learn ways to manage it every day. Yeah. Uh, you nice see, you see. seem to get around okay now, right? Yes, look, I do everything. I do everything. <laughs> That's terrific. Thank, Thank you, so you so much. Thank you. Sure. Uh, you have two books that you wrote collecting your photographs of Helmut Newton and the rest. And in it, you mentioned the fact that uh, you prefer male attire over dresses sometimes. Yes, and a did that, bit. Yes, I noticed. Mm -hmm. Did this anticipate the queer theory about that, which has come 20 years later? What is a theory? Where uh, he can explain it better. Uh. <laughs> About well, uh, the uh, queer, oh, uh, the, the 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 queer when you when you decide if you are male, female, if you like women or you like men. So. Uh, no, it wasn't that. I like men. Actually, as a friend of mine says, I like men. You know? <laughs> 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 but. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, uh, you know, sometimes I go out to work in, in seven, seven or eight o'clock in the morning and then I finish my work and maybe there is a cocktail party and you have to go to uh, a dinner. And men have solved this by having this suit that you can wear from morning to night. And women, they have to change their clothes. And I find that it was complicated in my career because I did have a career as active as a man. And so I thought, well, I'm going to dress like a man. So I'm dressed all the time. Also, talking about the scoliosis, I cannot wear high heels because of my back. Ah. So flat shoes, men shoes, men clothes. Right. It was stylish. Very and see what I mean? Com comfortable. <laughs> Good. I like that very much. <laughs> Hi. I know this guy. This is Adriano. <laughs> he came to see my show. Yesterday was the 40th time. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Adriano. Good evening, Ms. Rossellini. Um, uh, during uh, this year that I'm doing the research for the thesis I'm doing about you, uh, Miss, um, I was wondering uh, why uh, did they call you and they still call you the, today the most beautiful woman in the world? Because oh, yes. of course you are beautiful. <laughs> you're very, you're very beautiful. But everybody, everybody was obsessed with your beauty. It looked like a syndrome or something. No, I, I, no, no, no. I have to say, first of all, you have the disease. <laughs> You are my super fan, yeah. and now you're asking me why are people thinking you're beautiful? It is in your mind. I mean, I hope that it's not right. only in your mind and there are other no, people. No, no, they still say <laughs> but, it. But is, uh, is, is, that a diff is that a difficult thing as you're coming up as a model or you're coming up as an no, actress they to hear asked that? Me, I mean, they ask me. Sometimes they say, you know, you find it difficult to be the most beautiful woman in the world? I say, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. No, but right. I mean, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Of course, there is no statistics. I haven't done a research. Right. This but, you know, I'm considered, right, yeah, and, yeah. you know, I, I'm delighted and I'm flattered, but I don't know that I am. <laughs> I don't no. look at myself in the mirror and say, right. mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you had one, you have one vote over but here. But I, I have one vote. I have Adriano's vote. <laughs> Ma'am, thank, <laughs> thank you. Yes. You. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Hi. Yeah. As an animal lover and, and an animal activist, would you ever consider being the champion of the birds? <clears throat> Champion of the birds. Uh, yes, because uh, it's so, so birds of birds like bird, uh, bird so, birds that are so the birds are the, the population of the birds is collapsing. Is exactly. That, uh, yeah. So yes, uh, you know I don't know. I mean I studied conservation and my attempt to to do my shows and my I don't I think that. Uh, 
you know, the conservation um, message that is so negative, this is the end of the world, uh, the uh, birds are dying, uh, endangered species. Uh, I think that, that that word has been won so much. And then there is another group of people that shut up, you know, shuts them up because they don't want to hear that bad news all the time. And so my attempt to do something funny about animals, it was to win over the one that were resistant yep. to that complaint. Right. Uh, and I hope I, it works that way. <laughs> well, you're, you're a happy advocate as opposed to a as sad I'm, advocate. Exactly, because right? yeah. I don't want to hear it either. You know, I mean, when I went to school, it was so happy to study animal behavior part. Right. And when we did the conservation, it always started with all the statistic, how many, how many things were lost and how many things were lost, never to got them back. I went home so depressed. Right. And then what do you do, you know? And so, I thought that only in the love and the interest for animal, there is the sparkle that you say, we want to protect them, we want to be their steward. And so that's what I try to promote in my work. I love that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Sir. To what do you attribute your eloquence, your upbringing, your education, or something else? Um, I don't know. I'm a raconteur, and my father was one. Right. Well, <laughs> I always tell stories. It's kind of in the DNA, isn't it's it? It's a little bit in the DNA. But my, finally, I had a daughter, very, very straight, and when she was little, she would say, no, Mama, that didn't happen. And she would always correct me, and i say, but it's funnier if I tell it that way. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> I, it's not a lie. It's a coloratura, to give it a little bit of color. <laughs> now she finally, finally, stopped correcting me and she lets me to freely lie a little bit <laughs> to make it better. <laughs> but of course you've only told us the truth today. <laughs> yeah. No, I do tell the truth. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank Good. you. I think we have a natural end. What do you say? Yes. All right, let's give Isabella well, Russell a big Thank hand. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all. We'll see you again. Thank you. Great.